Nancy's in the waiting room. Hey, Nancy. Hey. Okay, now I gotta go up to where's the little park ECP ones? Where you? Oh, God. This lady just won't do. Well, we're already recording, so I'm gonna pause. That touched on Heartland's plans for developing the campus with 175 unit for senior housing with assisted living and independent living and even plans for memory care services. We, the board in Rutland Free Library, are on the verge of signing the initial memorandum of understanding with Heartland Development. The MOU is not a binding agreement. It's basic, it basically says that Rutland Free Library wants to buy the property and Heartland wants to have the library as its neighbor and lays out the steps to make that happen. So that's where we are in the process, just at the first steps of the deal. There's so much more work to be done. There's a lot of work that's already happened. Uh, none of us expected such a long process. Many of you out there probably have been involved in such processes and knew exactly that this would be, uh, that something like this would take this long. Uh, we started back in February, March, um, and here we are now. Um, so bear with us. <laughs> uh, this, this property, it's going to let us do so much, much more for the community in terms of programs and providing access to the public spaces, boardroom, available classroom spaces with smart boards, and in conjunction with Heartland and the Rutland Rec, providing access to the Casella Theater, and, and much, much more. Uh, community Health Centers is already at least a part of the Tuttle Hall for a call center. And I believe Heartland still has plans for more partnerships and collaborations with the space. And together with, with the REC and, and other partners that, that end up coming into that area and with the senior center uh, in the library, I can see many, many more collaborations in the future for that area. And we're very, very excited about it. You'll hear more about this meeting and about this as this meeting progresses and we look forward to your feedback. And so thank you. Um, this evening, we're very honored to uh, be joined by Congressman Peter Welch. I'd like to introduce you. I believe he's here with us. Randall? <laughs> uh, I believe he is, but uh, Peter, I am. there okay. we are. All right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, you know, I uh, just want to say I'm thrilled. I am so thrilled to be here. Uh, you know, what is it that we're all so proud of Rutland for? There's, there's a lot of things. But what other town in the midst of a once in a hundred year pandemic, literally, uh, would decide to move ahead, put a stake in the ground for the future, and relocate its cherished library? I mean, that's ambitious <laughs> and it, it is, a, it, it's a town that's totally engaged in its future, that it can find the energy and the stamina to do the incredibly hard work of relocating the library and take advantage of the opportunity that's there with that space available uh, at the College of St. Joseph's. Uh, and, you know, the plan that we're hearing about makes so much sense with the co-location of the uh, playing fields, the recreation area, uh, the 175 uh, units of assisted living, and of course, the library. Uh, but what I just really love is the fact that you're not being held back because there is this extraordinary uh, challenge that we're living through in this state and in this country. Um, and that is, is inspiring because we have to have hope that we're, we are going to get through this. We'll get to the other side of COVID. But when we get there, we don't want to leave education behind or our small businesses in town behind or our ambition to have a better library that's going to serve uh, Rutlanders for well over another hundred years. And you know, it's hard. I, I'm some, someone who's attached to where I am or whatever the existing space is. So when you're talking about moving the library 
uh, which has been there in Rutland since 1886. And it's been in that location since the 1930s uh, with those additions that you had, I think, in the mid 60s and, and one in, 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 uh, in, I think, in 80, 86. Uh, that's a big decision because there's a lot of cherished memories there. There's a lot of families that uh, drop their kids off. There's a lot of folks who went in there and read books and uh, had relationships with other people who love learning. And of course, it's a community focal point. Uh, and the community is rightly proud of that library. But there's an ambition here at work where uh, it's time uh, to build a bigger, better uh, library with the assets that are, are going to be combined uh, there over at the College of St. Joseph. So what you're doing uh, is something that can only be done by a community that has a high level of self-confidence and a high level of cooperation. And believe me, we could, we could use some of your attitude uh, down in Washington where, I, where I've been working lately, uh, but it's inspiring. And it's gonna make a difference for uh, the future of Rutland. Uh, there's a lot of hard work that's involved in it, but no one uh, who's on this uh, Zoom call is afraid hard work. Uh, because when you work hard and it's for the community, there's just so much benefit uh, and, and such long lasting benefit. So I want to thank you for uh, allowing me to join in this very special Zoom call where we can celebrate the incredible hard work that's been done, the vision of uh, the folks at the library, uh, the cooperation and leadership in the community. You've got your mayor, you've got your legislative leaders, your uh, local board of aldermen, uh, all involved. Uh, and, and I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you, because this is a statement by Rutland and all of you who have put energy into this, that our future is bright, that Rutland's future is bright. So thank you. And I wish you the very best of luck. And I'm looking forward to coming to the library too, when we all can do that together. Thank you very much, um, uh, Peter, Congressman. Uh, we really appreciate your uh, support of our project. Uh, we appreciate the fact that you were able to, uh, to uh, join us on uh, such short notice because this whole thing came together uh, very rapidly. Uh, for those who, um, uh, I have been trying to join on, uh, oh, am I too close to the, am I off, keep offering here? So th for those who uh, unfortunately were trying to join us on Facebook, we are having some technical issues and I apologize. Uh, this has been a big lift trying to get Zoom and Facebook and uh, screen sharing and uh, PowerPoint all working together. So uh, thanks for putting up with us. Um, at this point, it is my distinct pleasure um, to introduce a special guest. Uh, I've heard him speak a half dozen times and uh, I just, uh, I really appreciate what he has brought to Vermont libraries. Um, he has a, a clear and distinct vision for what we should be doing as librarians in the state. Uh, and with that, I would like you to uh, please uh, welcome state librarian and librarian extraordinaire, uh, Jason Broughton, who is joining us from, I believe, Montpelier today. Hello, hello. Hi everyone, uh, I am Jason Broughton. I am your state librarian and commissioner for the Vermont Department of Libraries. What a wonderful time this is to be invited to a cause that is so impactful and empowering to know that a community feels it is very important to establish the role of a library. To me, this re-cements what Rutland is looking to do for its community and also as a representation of the state. For some people who might say, well, you know, the library's been there so long, it's storied. Things do occur where sometimes opportunity is available and we sometimes need to really consider what is best, what's appropriate, also during this time, what is cost efficient in helping achieve a goal for the greater good. This move definitely is something that I know will impact a lot of people. There might be a few tears moving from the old space into the new, but it's a cause for celebration. A library is a very unique thing that has space and place. And your library definitely has a storied history within the community and will continue to do so. 
In doing that, I think what you are hoping to do by this new opportunity that has arisen by so many people working together is to help people through what I would like to say are the life stages of our life. You are able to bring children into a library for story times. Sometimes people meet their first book, their first librarian or library staff person who has helped them, followed by high school and looking at what you're doing at your school library and the public library on projects that you're trying to do, followed by academia. If you're going off to college or even if you're using the public library as an educational space, it's going to assist. Then followed by as we age, coming back into the library sometimes for meetings, conversations, as a citizen, as a colleague, as a friend. And this new embarking upon journey that you, your board and your town has started to do is going to be something that will herald in, at least for your community and the people of Vermont, a very unique way of repurposing things that people might find challenging in addition to saying to the community, we are going to go to places that you dare dream. With that, I will simply, because I ran outside and picked up this little thing for you, which I will bring in person, a set of flowers, a bouquet to your library and your board. So at this moment, I am throwing virtual confetti to say thank you for having me here. And I hope that all of you will benefit from this thing that I call a celebration. I can't wait to be dancing in your library, Randall. And believe me, I do dance because you you've seen it. Take care and thank you. All righty. Um, let's just see here. Okay. Um, we're going to just stay on Jason for a minute because I'm doing double duty between uh, being the uh, speaker and uh, trying to manage uh, with, with limited success our Zoom feed. Um, so no problem, Jason, Randall. Um, people can look at my handsome face as you continue to watch. And, and, and <laughs> pr provide us with lots of, of, of uh, happy uh, responses as we go through. Um, I just really want to talk a little bit about um, how we got here because it's really key to the entire story of this project. We did not in any way, shape, or form decide that we were going to move Redland Free Library. And when the board first asked me about it, I said, don't even bother to try. It's been tried before. Uh, we should just plan on staying here. And um, we were planning on renovating. So we put tremendous amount of time and effort into it. I, I talked to Paula Baker yesterday. Uh, 33 years ago, Paula Baker was hired with the express intent of renovating this library space. Um, so 33 years on, uh, we, we got it for you, Paula. We're right there. Um, <laughs> But that's what we've been working on. And we've been saving money and all our effort went toward that. And we thought we had our plan. Um, we've talked with NBF architects at length, uh, Ralph Nimps and Casey Getcha were through and they did some preliminary sketches for us. And, and we were set, we were good to go. Um, it was gonna cost a million and a half dollars. Three quarters of that, or three quarters of a million, half of that money was gonna come from the library from the savings we've made over the last 33 years. And the rest of it, we were going to ask the citizens of Rutland to do a bond, as they have in the past, in support of Rutland Free Library. Um, and we were getting ready to spend that money and to, to tell uh, NBF, go ahead and do the final planning for us, please. We'd like to see the pictures. We want to start work on this. And the board, in its wisdom, said, we need to do our due diligence. It would be inappropriate for us to just go ahead and spend all that money without making sure we had done all our due diligence. And uh, those of us who have you know, been around the city for 10, 15, 20 years, our whole lives, whatever it might happen to be, we all said, nope, the library is in the right spot. Let's just move the process forward. And uh, one of our new board members, at the time our newest board member, is very new to Rutland. She'd been here, I believe, about a year. Uh, I might have that wrong, but not very long anyways, just a, a newcomer compared to many of us. And uh, she has six children. And she went to the gym with them, the new city recreation facility with them. Uh, and on one of her trips, she heard a rumor that in fact, there was a vacant library next door to the city recreation center. And she brought it back to our next board meeting. And, and those of us who've been around, we all sort of went, you know, you're right. Uh, and it was really an embarrassing moment, but we, we hopefully got over it. Um, and so then we started doing our due diligence on that space. 
Is it big enough? Yes. Does it work? Yes. Is it flexible? Yes. Is the building in good enough condition? Yes. Can we afford to purchase it and do the renovation it needs? Yes. Everything checked off all the way down the line. Yes, 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 yes. It made complete sense. So at that point, well, actually that brings us to the point we're at tonight because um, we did our due diligence to make sure that it, we're bringing to you, to the citizens of Rutland and Rutland County, uh, a site that will work. It will be a better library than what we can do here. Um, uh, it has all the features that we've been told by architects, um, world-class architects that, that we've been in webinars with, that kind of folk, that this is the, the CSJ is the kind of library that we should look for for the next 20 or 30 years. Uh, and so when we realized that we could do it cheaper, save the citizens of Rutland, probably a three quarter of a million dollar bond, uh, do it for $300,000 less than we could to do a so-so renovation here and, and provide better services. It just became so obvious that we needed to move forward with this project. And that's why you're here tonight joining us. Um, with that, I would like to introduce you to Catherine Picone, uh, that board member. Um, uh, Catherine's been a, a, just a breath of joy on the board. She brings enthusiasm. She brings a different perspective. Uh, and I just like her to talk a little bit about what it means for her uh, as a parent uh, to be able to access the library differently than she can now and what it means to her. Catherine, are you on the call? I am. Thank you, Randall, for that introduction. And um, yes, I'm the guilty party that has six kids. They're all my own and they're a joy to have. Um, I add my thanks to each of you for being here and always supporting the Rutland Free Library. Um, tonight, I would like to share with you what this move to our new library means for my family, as well as patrons in the community. To help you understand my perspective, I thought it might be helpful to share a little bit about my story and how libraries played an instrumental role in my life, and then the impact I see this opportunity has on our future. Um, from an early age, libraries have given me access to possibilities and experiences that otherwise would not have been available to a girl of little means. With its seemingly endless books, the library was a gateway to new and exciting experiences. And when it was time to set aside the adventures for homework, the librarians were always reliable sources of guidance. When we began raising our family, I made it a priority to take my kids to the library every week. As a mother, libraries have enabled me to nurture a love of learning and exploration within my children while instilling a sense of belonging to something greater than themselves. Every Thursday, my little boys love story time and crafts with June and play group in the Fox Room on Fridays with Miss Lynn, both of which were an especially warm respite in the freezing winter months and helped me feel like I was part of a family. In the summer months, we frequently took advantage of the Vermont State Park Pass available through the Rutland Library, visiting Echo Lake, um, Lake St. Catherine and Emerald Lake, just to name a few. And we got to know our new home of Vermont so well. With COVID, my family relied on the library even more than ever. With oodles of more time on our hands and tons of new information I had to learn in order to teach my kids suddenly, we loaded up our wagon with books before they closed the first time. When they reopened, there was an audible cheer from all of my kids every time we pulled up to the library to pick up new material. Needless to say, we love our library. When I think about moving our library to the old college of St. Joseph's Library, there are five opportunities that I'm excited about, I'm most excited about. The first is a dedicated space for children and teens. As a mother of little ones, I know firsthand the crucial need we have to create an endless, uh, an enclosed space for children to learn in a way that is most appropriate for them, to move, play, sing, and read out loud. In the new library, we will have a space dedicated for our smallest, wiggliest of patrons, while, all, while also being mindful of our older patrons who have come to the library to work in a quiet space. In addition, we will have a space to create an area 
for teens, collaborating with our noon teen librarian and local schools to create an environment that balances the influence of technology with the need for connection. It's an, it is critical that we continue to stay relevant to our teens as they will grow up to shape the future of buildings like this. Secondly, the library will provide a number of collaborative spaces for students and people that work from home. We have a significant population of patrons working from home, which has only grown during COVID. We are fortunate that when they updated the college library a few years back, they also saw the tremendous value in designing flexible spaces that can accommodate different work dynamics. Third, the layout of the new library um, and its property will provide two very important safety features I am personally looking forward to. One is the very open design that allows us much needed line of sight to everyone and everything that is happening in a majority of the building. This will greatly increase the security we can offer our staff and patrons, but also um, the confidence and security we want fostered in a public space. The second is the luxury of a parking lot. <laughs> if we, if you have ever circled the building more than once or more than three times in hopes um, to, par to find a parking spot or try to unbuckle little ones on a busy street, you will know my pain. Fourth, it will um, not cost the taxpayers like you and I a dime. Before we looked into this building, as Randall indicated, we were strongly considering an expansive renovation project that would have cost $1.5 million, a price we could not have paid without the need for a bond. The renovations were merely to meet the needs of our patrons, allow us more functional space and fix some of the challenges we could not ignore. I'm grateful to be on a board that supported the idea to consider the, al the alternative of repurposing this beautiful building. Our team did a thorough analysis of both parties and when we evaluated not only the costs, but also how far those funds could stretch and the burden we would need to place on taxpayers, it became clear that this route was the fiscally responsible thing to do. That is certainly something to be excited about. Finally, Location, location, location. Our new library will literally, sorry, will literally be surrounded by connections to the community. To the right is the library's new recreation center. Behind that are sports fields and trails leading people there. On the other side, we will have access to Tuttle Hall, a relatively newly designed space um, designed to host events and speakers. I have to admit, that the idea to investigate um, this building came from a very practical experience. I was driving my son to the rec center for basketball practice one morning. And as I was contemplating what I could do while he was inside, I looked at the library and started to think, wouldn't it be nice if that library were still open and I could read in there while I wait? I think this is something that we can all relate to as parents and get excited about. We have seen the numbers of people utilizing the rec center. And most recently, we heard their voices to make it a permanent fixture. If there is one thing that we learned from this response, it's that there is a greater need in the community for places to gather, play, grow, and work together. And with Heartland's plans to bring housing for senior citizens next door, that need will only increase. Sydney Shelton once said that libraries store the energy that fuels imagination. They open up windows to the world and inspire us to explore and achieve and contribute to improving our quality of life. At a fundamental level, libraries are more than a collection of books and titles. They're a means of building people and communities. Since its funding, its founding, the Rutland Free Library has been a place of gathering and community sorry, at the Rutland Free Library um, has been, a, sorry, a place of gathering and community where members can learn and discover new possibilities. With the transition to our new space, we will build on that legacy in new ways and for generations to come. Thank you. 
Nice job. Can I just say I'm a really, really lucky director to have such a talented board. Um, <laughs> you know, these folks, really honestly, you guys have done so much. Uh, the work has been awesome, amazing. Um, the one gentleman I haven't mentioned is, uh, is Barry Cohen, who's been our uh, chief negotiator. He is our treasurer. Uh, the work that Barry, yeah, the work that Barry's done on this has been just really outstanding, uh, fabulous work. And Larry. And, and Larry, and yes, everybody else. Um, <laughs> gotta look out for the brother-in-law, you know. Um, um, so, uh, and, and now I've lost my place. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we are looking at a partnership. Um, one of the first questions that came up and it's come up repeatedly is uh, how about access? And, and certain folks uh, are going to have suffer less access because they're used to coming here to this building. But a lot of folks um, are gonna find more access. People like Catherine and, and folks like that who rely on being able to find a spot to park or, or whatever. One huge area is, um, uh, Accessible parking, ADA accessible parking. Uh, right now we have zero actual ADA accessible uh, spots. We have one that is officially, but really it's only because it's grandfathered in. It does not have a curb cut. It's not wide enough. It in no way resembles a, an actual ADA accessible parking spot. And we just did a meeting last week with a bunch of the principals and we all agreed that we would put as many uh, accessible parking spots as we can fit in right in front of the building. We hope it'll be about a half a dozen, uh, but certainly as many as we can squeeze in. So on the one hand, you've got the folks that maybe uh, like to be able to walk to the downtown library. And on the other hand, you've got folks that it just doesn't work for. And we understand that that's a trade-off. And so uh, my pledge is that I will work as hard as I can with uh, the mayor, um, with Kim Peters from Rutland Rec, uh, with John Weatherhog, um, and, and we will find ways to make this an accessible uh, library for as many people as we can. Uh, with that, I just mentioned him. Um, uh, we're very, very happy to have the support of the mayor and the ma majority of the board of Ald aldermen who I've been able to speak with. All the ones I've been able to speak with, a couple I, I was unable to touch base with. But it's important that the city uh, support this project. And, and one of the early supporters, one of the people that said, yes, I think that's a good idea for the city of Rutland is in fact, Mayor David Allaire. And David, I think you're on the call. I am. Perfect. Okay, so thank you, uh, Randall. Great to be with everyone tonight. Um, I've just got a few quick comments to make. Um, I'd like to read a statement that I have put together and then I got a couple of thoughts uh, afterwards. So. One of the main areas of uh, our work here at Rutland City, and one of my priorities, has been to support decisions and changes looking to the future and setting ourselves up for success. The news that the Board of Trustees of the Rutland Free Library and its director, Randall Smathers, Randall, has decided to pursue this move to, uh, to the College of St. Joseph campus, it comes with mixed emotions, mixed emotions for me. I'm a lifelong resident of the city of Rutland. That library has been a fixture at its present location my entire life. I think it's safe to say that we all love that building. However, as been mentioned before, the building is beautiful and as historic as it is, it is not properly set up for libraries of the 21st century. This historic move will position the library for growth and success in the years to come and literally save the city taxpayers in the short term and the long term. And I really look forward to the successful future of the Rutland Free Library. So having said that, just a couple of thoughts that uh, I put together in the last couple of days. I understand this is a huge change coming to the users and to the patrons of the Rutland Free Library. I'm still trying to fully comprehend all that that move entails. I do know that the city municipal government, and in particular the Board of Aldermen um, and myself, is responsible for city buildings. Over the last few months, we have raised the issue uh, many times of how many city buildings that we own, and there are quite a few, the cost of upkeep of all those buildings, and is there any way of consolidating operations in order to save taxpayers money? 
That discussion was not the reason the Board of Trustees of the library made their decision to consider moving. But it's a fact that the library building is historic, which is a fancy way of saying it's old, but it's facing, as has been mentioned, hundreds of thousands of dollars of structural and mechanical work, which by the way, is not deferred maintenance as the city has invested thousands of dollars recently in roof work, et cetera. But it's work that is necessary and expensive and it's mostly because of the age of the building and because of the things that would be involved in moving the operation uh, up to the 21st century in the present building. So the Board of Trustees made their decision, I believe, again, for the future viability and success of moving into the 21st century and providing our community with the best services and functionality to serve the taxpayers of the city of Rutland for years and literally decades to come. So I look forward to hearing, and this is the most important part, hearing the discussion and input from the community uh, in the discussion that goes back and forth between the community and the Board of Trustees of the library. As always, my office is ready and willing to assist in any way that we possibly can. And I certainly look forward to the future of a successful and sustainable Rowling Free Library. And with that, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to everyone tonight. Um, I'm enthused by the number of people that are on this call. I want to thank uh, Congressman Welch for uh, um, being a part of this and supporting, uh, as he always has, uh, everything that we're doing here in the city of Rutland. So again, thank you very much, Randall, and look forward to talking to you again. Randall, I think you're muted. Yeah, it only took 18 tries to convince the uh, the computer that I didn't want to be muted anymore. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, David. Um, we really do appreciate the support uh, of the city. Um, this is a partnership. Um, it, it's not any one entity. Uh, it's going to take everybody to make it work. Uh, we really appreciate I've had a preliminary conversation with Kim Peters uh, at Rutland Breck. Uh, we're so excited about the possibilities there. They are they're just endless. The, you know, the ability for, for us to do programming in conjunction with Rutland Rec. Uh, the support from the city already, the, the officials, uh, it means just so much to us. Um, and uh, with that, I just kind of want to touch back a little bit on something that, that David discussed and, and Peter Welch did, which is the affordability, the idea that we can do it now. This is a completely unique opportunity for the library. Um, obviously, there's not a whole lot of vacant, beautiful, recently restored libraries available in, <laughs> in any city, um, but especially Rutland. But the other thing that really makes it work for us, and this is, this is another partnership, is Heartland, the developer. Uh, we'll be doing, of course, they're, they're putting a building up. They're knocking down some uh, part of, of the building we're looking at, the, the long wing that runs off toward Tuttle Hall, uh, but they're doing a lot of building. And we're working with them, we're working with their builder, uh, with one architect, with one builder, so that uh, a lot of the overhead costs go down. And the combination of the million dollars that the city of Rutland spent, or not the city, the, the area spent. CSJ is not a school that got, that got money from Los Angeles or New York. CSJ is a, money, uh, a college that was supported locally. And if you go into the library, you'll see all the plaques and the thank yous for the people who did the work uh, who donated the money, who put in the time to make that library a success while the college was there. And we're building on their work. Uh, and we're building in conjunction with, uh, with Heartland. Um, uh, as I said, you know, the, the overhead costs of doing two separate projects are considerably higher than the overhead cost of doing one. Um, and it, it's that kind of cooperation from Heartland uh, that really is gonna make this project viable um, so that we will be able to do really a, a, a world-class library uh, in Rutland, Vermont. Uh, we do have a representative from Hartland with us tonight. And uh, with that, I'd, I'd invite John Weatherhog, uh, who's now with Hartland, who's their local representative. John, I think you're on the call. I am. 
Perfect. Well, Randall, thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, as many of you know, I am John Weatherhog, uh, formerly known as the Reverend John Weatherhog, uh, former senior minister at the Grace Congregational United Church of Christ, located uniquely uh, abutting right next door to the Rutland Free Library on Court Street. We have a long passion for the Free Library uh, as a faith community, but, but for us and our family uh, serving that community for, for 15 long years. I'm also a co-founder and now serve as project manager on behalf of Heartland Communities of America, working on the former campus of the College of St. Joseph the Provider. We're there to transform this beautiful location into a wonderful living community for over 200 seniors uh, living in uh, independent living, assisted living, and memory care living suites. In, uh, and now we'll be developing those beautifully here on campus. We are absolutely thrilled that the Rutland Free Library will be purchasing the George Eddy Library space here on campus and affiliated uh, office spaces as well. Now with the Rutland Recreation's wonderful new community center on board, our seniors will literally be connected to 93,000 plus volumes of literature and technical journals, magazines and books and newspapers from around the world. I mean, who wouldn't want to live literally connected to their city library? They're gonna be adjoined uh, by a corridor. So congratulations, Rutland Free Library. Congratulations, Rutland City and surrounding communities. May God bless us all as we make our way through this wonderful or, well, mildly horrific pandemic so that we might one day be reconnected uh, to enjoin our hearts together in the celebration of uh, this wonderful community, and especially through the Rutland Free Library, which will be located now at 71 Clement Road in Rutland. It'll be a beautiful space for all to share. Thanks, Randall. Karen, can you uh, wrap us up this evening? Oh, actually, we swapped. Yes, that's uh, your turn. Never mind, it's my turn. turn. I know you've been going all night, but it's your turn. I have. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to open the floor to comment in just a minute. We're actually running uh, a few minutes ahead here, which is good. Uh, I don't want to keep too many folks from dinner. I just really want to emphasize that we want to hear from, from you, from the uh, leaders of our community, from the folks who are a part of the library community, part of the family, a lot of you folks on here. Uh, have done hours and hours of uh, community work with us, uh, raising money, hosting events. Um, you're what make a library work. A library, we're in a building, but we're not a building. A library is not a building. It's a location that library happens in. Um, so I do wanna just briefly discuss the public input process. It starts here, it starts tonight. We're gonna uh, open the floor up in, a, in just a, about three minutes here uh, and start doing input. We're also going to, uh, we have built a web page that will let the public do input. So they can log in and they can tell us what they need from a library or what they need from a community. What resources do they need as opposed to what do we wanna build? Hopefully there'll be a lot of crossover, but we are getting a, um, a building that has sufficient flexibility that we will be able to, um, to hopefully add a couple of things. So we're gonna spend from now till the end of February, doing public input, asking people what they need, what can we add, what kind of resources do they need from us? And then we're gonna pick as many as we can that we can fit in and we'll build them into the final space, into the final design of the project so that we're responding to what people have identified uh, as needing. Uh, and part of that is uh, I have applied for a grant that just came up, it was, it was synchronicity uh, that will let us also reach out is disadvantaged teens and disadvantaged youth in our community because we feel uh, that there are a lot of areas where uh, there might be resources that teens are not finding. And so we wanna help make that connection as well so that we're really reaching into the community to get feedback on this, on this project. Uh, and that should wind up uh, middle of March, end of March. And then uh, we'll do the, uh, the final plans, the final drafting. Um, uh, Casey, I think, is on the call tonight from MBI. She's been proud of us to work with. Um, and then ideally uh, in June, uh, we'd start work. And uh, next fall, we would be moving in to our new home uh, at, uh, at CSJ. So uh, with that, uh, thank you to the library staff, first off. Uh, to the board, to you, our guests and friends, um, to the speakers we've had tonight, and uh, to the community that supports us so well. 
And with that, we uh, now invite you to weigh in either through chat or just wave your hand on Zoom. We'll go back to the big uh, Zoom grid and uh, we'll call on you. I do wanna make the opportunity to start with any aldermen who are present who wish to speak, as I know that they do have a uh, 7 p.m. meeting tonight. So can we get to the Zoom, to the uh, gallery view, please? Gallery view. All right, oh, all righty, now I can see you. And I see we have somebody in the waiting room. I'll get it, you there, please. So uh, any aldermen that uh, want to jump in? Uh, I do know you're on the uh, shortest time frame tonight, or a short time frame. Yeah. Unmute yourself. Or we'll uh, Sharon Davis. Yep, Sharon yep. up top. Larry said his hand up. Yeah. And then Lisa. Um, Sharon, I, you're live, Sharon. I would just like to say that I think this is a wonderful project. Um, I think the um, the mayor and I had this conversation kind of half-heartedly when um, the rec center first moved down to the gymnasium, um, but never thought of it going forward. Um, so I'm grateful to Catherine who had that thought process and took it to, to where it needs to be. Um, the only thing I would think of, and I've, I've gotten a few uh, questions actually on here tonight with the chat, is uh, because we're going from one section of the city to another section of the city to a small order to make library, we'll be able to access the one um, down um, by the College of St. Joe's. So I would just say I think it's a tremendous, I, tremendous idea. I think it's going to work beautifully, and I think those are just issues that we need to think of as we move forward. Thank you. Uh, other aldermen that want to unmute themselves and jump in. We can't see everybody on the call. Lisa Ryan had her hand. Lisa's up. Lisa. Hi, good evening, Randall. And thank you so much for this presentation. Um, I enjoyed speaking to you on the phone the other day um, about this uh, new endeavor. I just want to say that I'm really excited for you. Um, I'm very supportive of it. I have lived in Rutland my whole life, and I remember my parents taking me to the Rutland Free Library since I was old enough to get my library card, which I believe I still have my original one. Um, so a lot of memories uh, at Rutland Free Library at that location, um, and I, I certainly will, you know, miss that was a big part of my life growing up, and even when I were turned home from college, I spent some time doing some research at the library, but excited for the transition to um, the new campus. And I think it'll be wonderful um, to have everything inclusive in the same area. So best of luck and please let me know how I can help. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we cannot see everybody on the call. So if you're an alderman and you're on a time frame, please uh, just unmute yourself and holler and we'll find you. Randall, this is Chris. Chris. Yep. Hi, how are you? So, um, yeah, so I want to kind of echo uh, Lisa's thoughts here. Um, one, I'm very appreciative of the work that your board um, has done, and you in particular, in putting this together um, and trying to do your due diligence on, on that piece. Um, I, I can see the vision that you all have, um, you know, with the rec center there and the library there, um, with the assisted uh, living facility there. You, it's a nice campus, an intergenerational campus that will be good for our kids. Um, I've been, I'll encourage you, and we've talked about this, of working with the Vermont Youth Project and the work that they're doing in that data. Um, it, it's a, it, you can see the vision for our kids and our youth uh, growing up, and so I'm appreciative of that. I think the city has a responsibility to do with the, you know, with the current building, and how do we try to replicate that foot traffic um, that you generated in that downtown? Um, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't go forward on the project that, that you have in, in front of you. Um, we have work to do on our side of, you know, trying to make sure we generate that foot traffic for downtown. Um, but like I said, I, I, I can see the vision for our youth and I, I, I think it's a, a great step forward. So thank you. And thank you, Chris. Um, one, is there another screen there we can check and see any more board members? All right, going once, going twice and Let's open it up to the general public. Everybody, um, Cheryl Hooker. Cheryl, Thanks, you? Randall. Thank you. And thank you for the invitation to be on the Zoom call. I know that there are going to be a lot more discussion about this project. And as the mayor said, there are kind of mixed emotions, especially for those of us who've lived here all our lives and have only known that building as a library. Mm -hmm. But um, I want to say that I really appreciated Congressman Welch's 
image of Rutland as a community of hope. And I'm hoping that this is going to invigorate what's happening here in the city. And um, just another point, as my husband pointed out, the library will be across from the recreation center as it used to be when we were kids. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the um, opportunity and all the best. And if there's anything certainly that we can do as, as a legislative body, um, let us know. Well, thank you. Um, and I, I will just, if you go back to gallery view, uh, Amy. Uh, Brian Collimore. Yep. Brian, Senator. Thank you, Randall. Um, when we talked on the phone the other day, one of the things, and Catherine did a great job explaining one of the impacts uh, in a positive way about the parking situation as it currently exists and how much more improved it will be with the move. But one of the other issues, and I think uh, Alderman Davis mentioned it, when we have a situation where the library is now downtown, we tend to assume that a lot of people walk to it and that they don't drive and that this will negatively impact them in the sense that it's way far away in one sense to be walking from downtown to get to the library. But you made a very good point and I think it might be helpful for others to know that you did take a look at your foot traffic and there's really not that many people that in fact walk to the library. Is that not true? Uh, well, certainly after school, um, because that was an issue that it was raised internally. What about kids coming in after school? And we just have very, very few kids accessing us. Uh, we did add a teen services librarian. She's done great programming. But getting kids to come after school uh, has been a real issue. And we're hopeful that there's a partnership there with the schools. I see uh, Bill Olson's on tonight. Uh, we'd love to be able to be a better partner to the schools and provide uh, service to the kids after school. So um we don't know exactly who's walking and who's driving because we don't have a, a parking lot to look in um but certainly this kids after school is is a big one that we we hope to serve better uh mr capoli representative larry capoli you've been very patient and then jennifer <laughs> thank you very much randall um two issues um there is there is the uh the bus i think that serves college now and will continue to do so mm -hmm. And the other uh, issue that comes to my mind, has there been any speculation into an annual savings in terms yes. of expense, uh, having the new library versus where you're located now? I swear folks, I did not set this up with Larry ahead of time. This is a spontaneous question. Um, we expect to see real significant savings in terms of maintenance on a newer building uh, a well renovated building. So our goal is to save that money and then to take some of the money that we're saving and put it aside. Um, just, a, a, you know, board members who are on finance committee members, I'd like to see $20,000 um, uh, a year set aside. Um, uh, and then we just put that money into the uh, into the fund and um, be able to do our own repairs moving forward. So it, yes, we can save money immediately, but I think it lets us also save money over the long term. Yes, and um, I saw Kim Peters had popped up that she'd like to talk. Larry, did I answer your question well enough? Yes, yes, okay, you did. Perfect. Thank you very much. Kim, Kim Peters is on the call. Kim, do you want to shout out? Yeah, I just wanted to, um, you know, thank you know the board for the work and and you know we have. We have been extremely fortunate with the Board of Aldermen, with um, Jennifer Scott, who's on, you know, she, her and I had this vision, right? I mean, back last November, and when I went to her and went to um, the mayor of a community center. So if you build it, they will come. The, the great thing is they're already built, right? So um, we have only begun to see the opportunities for families and for teenagers for young kids. I mean, I'm sitting here right now in the middle of a pandemic and we're still hopping down here um, safely, but you know, we're here and the opportunities are endless. And, and when I started to hear word of this a few months ago, um, really because I was being nosy, but you know, <laughs> I knew that this was a possibility. Um, and it's, it's, it does, it just bridges some gaps that we're not, we don't even know about yet. Um, so I just, I'm extremely appreciative and um, uh, we're so, we do get the foot traffic. And when, even when we moved here, we had a little bit of, you know, people skeptical of, of 
kids getting here. We do have a bus route. We do need to work on that. Um, we need to we need to educate the kids on how to take it. Um, I need to educate myself on how to take the buses. So that is definitely a plan, and that is definitely a collaboration with so many different um, partners within the city. So feel free, come down and see us, and it's going to be great. Thank you. And thank you. And Jennifer, um, thank you very much, Kim. I really appreciate that. Jennifer, I, I skipped over you, I'm afraid. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. That's OK. It, it's fun to put Kim ahead of me. Kim, Kim speaks a lot better than I do. Uh -huh. <laughs> She's always so positive. No, I, I, I would echo the things that Kim shared. And I, too, was very happy when Randall shared the news that the plan to move the library to the Georgetti space uh, was coming to fruition. Um, as the former president of College of St. Joseph, I am personally excited uh, to see this come to life in this space as I'm sure are all the people who participated in and informed the CSJ feasibility study that envision such a space of a mixed use community space where programs and organizations that all are in synergy with one another are, are there to bring the community together. So I couldn't be happier. There are certainly things that need to be worked out and, um, I, I have complete confidence that those things will be addressed um, as they come up and I have full faith in the community to support this. Uh, I think it's wonderful and I'm so happy for you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Joan, Joan Gamble had popped up as wanting to say something. Did I hear something being done? Yeah. You need to unmute Joan first. Okay, there, can you hear me? Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's fine. So, um, having been on the library board for a while, I've known about the issues with the old building and we struggled with it endlessly. And I'm so excited. I just heard about this idea, so it was kept a good secret. I just heard about the idea and I am just thrilled because having gone down to the rec center and seen how many children, families, um, elderly are there all the time before COVID hit. I haven't been there since COVID. So I think it's now up to us as a community to address the issues that exist of, of getting us there. We have a bike path that goes close to there. We should be able to get it so that people can walk there in addition to the bus route. And I know I was kind of checking, like for my house, it takes five minutes to drive to the library. It takes seven minutes to drive to CSJ. And it's not, it's not that much longer. It's just that it's not on our regular route. So I am so um, thankful to the current library board. I, am, I cried during Catherine's uh, presentation uh, talking about, or did. I got, well, I got teary eyed. Um, <laughs> and I just really appreciate the board of having this foresight because having been on the board for so long and trying to deal with these issues, I am just, I am so impressed with all of you. So uh, let me know what I can do to help in the process. And I think if we all work together as a community, we can make this. And the idea of having all of our community services like what the rec center has there, the library and other services all together. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Joe. Thank you so much. And, and we will take you up on that offer. <laughs> <laughs> I already have. <laughs> uh, I, see, I see Paula Baker on the call and Paula and I had a nice chat. Paula, did you have a few words you wanted to share with us tonight? Am I unmuted now? You are. Okay. I am so happy when you called with this news. I'm just thrilled, just like Joan says. I am so thrilled there are so many good reasons that this move is the right thing at the right time. And I am, my hat's off to, to you, Randall, to the board and to the staff. This can't be easy for the staff and for many, many users who walk to the library. I love 10 Corp Street, but I'm really looking forward to 71 Clement Road. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. No. Is there anybody else on the call who wants to weigh in tonight? Matt, I did get your invitation to talk, uh, talk with uh, 
um, Project Vision. I see Joe's on the call. Uncle Dave. Oh, Uncle Dave. Uncle Dave has his hand up and then Liz. Uncle Dave first, then Liz. Okay, I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you for including me on this, Randall. I think it's great. And I'm really looking forward to having you on the air, actually, Friday in the nine o'clock hour to discuss it on EXP. But uh, I just wanted to add, you know, realize that with the advent of our community radio station, we're here to help the library any way possible. Uh, you know, one of our missions is to serve the community. And that being said, you know, if you have information that needs to be disseminated to the community, different programs, different uh, activities, I think the technological area will be enhanced with you with the move to CSJ. I think there are a lot of positives to this, and WEXP looks forward to being a part of it. And I will take you up on that as well. Thank you, David. Always a pleasure. Liz Weinman, I think you had your hand up. Is that right? Um, hello, everyone. I just, uh, I can't be any more eloquent than everyone else has been. I just want you to know that having spent um, four years of my life on that campus uh, after reading in the New York Times in our New York apartment, how Project Vision and Jim Baker were trying to help this town and then being recruited to work at the college, um, the place is sacred. Uh, so I can, I can only speak for the sisters who are probably thrilled to see that in some way, shape or form, this campus will continue to engage the community. So um, those of you who do not know, um, some of the sisters are still here uh, in town and I can't speak for them. I, I do speak with them uh, every once in a while so that they remind me to say my prayers or tell me that if I don't say my prayers, I'm in big trouble. Um, but the campus is such a wonderful place, even outside the library. The library is gorgeous. It was our favorite place to meet um, uh, on teams and with classes. But the actual grounds uh, are, are truly, you know, you couldn't get a more zen place to go and read a book or work out and then walk around and benefit from the sunshine and fresh air. So, um, so I'm happy that the campus will live on. Um, in a way that will help people spiritually, emotionally, physically uh, to feel great about Rutland. Thank you, Liz. I, that's a really beautiful sentiment. Um, I did see uh, Deb Higgins had, uh, had joined us. For those that don't know Deb, uh, Deb uh, is one of our treasures at Rutland Free Library. She was here for approximately ever. <laughs> and uh, we, we are glad she's doing well in her retirement, but we miss her. And Deb, uh, uh, it, the floor is yours. Uh, I found out about this. Um, at first, I had that, well, spending 43 years at uh, uh, 10 Court Street, you know, in, in, in the treasured old building. Um, I loved that building, but I knew that the building didn't love us. Um, it, it's a beautiful old building, but it is old. And I know all the trouble that we had with it um, from air quality to the fact that it was never built as a library. Um, so we had to make adjustment after adjustment after adjustment. And that there were always concerns about the, the safety of the building, line of sight, uh, you know, being able to you know, watch out for each other. It was very, very. Uh oh, you froze, Deb. Uh, oh, we'll have to bring her back. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to you. Uh, you're having some technical issues. Anybody else uh, on the call who wants to speak tonight? We're, we're here to talk to you, so to, don't be shy. All right, anybody in the chat? Nobody in the chat. Bill Olson. Bill Olson. Yeah. Thanks, Randall. I, I just wanted to say when we had our, our problem with the Keefe gym last year and Kim Peters and the mayor made it possible for us to use the, uh, the, the gym at St. Joe's, it was such a great place and I, I really hadn't realized what a, what a good location that is. So I think that adding this to the mix of what kids can access and, and gain from is such a good idea. And I think, I think you're going to see a lot of kids down there using both places. So I, I think I appreciate what you're doing. And I also think having gone through the renovations uh, that 
Mary Moran led with our Rutland High School library and the, the studies that we put in to try to modernize what, what a library does and how it functions. That was so valuable for us. We ended up with a beautiful product. So I think that's the same thing that you're gonna be embarking on. It would be really good for the community. So thank you. And thank you, Bill. And we are excited that we have the same team because that is a beautiful library that the schools have at RHS. And, and we're working with exactly the same folks that built that for you. So we're very excited and, and thank you. Um, anybody else? I thought I saw somebody else unmuted. We're, we're kind of playing hopscotch here, trying to, oh, trying to find. So Randall, congratulations to the board as well. I remember if Jeff McKee were here, he'd be like saying we had ESP when we were walking through CSJ. Uh, in March for the COVID sites that we were looking at. And we went into the library. All I kept saying is, oh my God, this is a great place to have kids. Look at all the technology spot, the art spot, the books. Like, I was so excited to figure out how to get that building used for youth and family. So I'm, thank you, Joan, by the way, I don't know where she went, but Joan's the one that invited me to this. And I'm absolutely thrilled as if there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm not seeing hands, so anybody else who wants to just unmute, oh, there's Joe Kraus, yep. And I, I need to say congratulations to both Caprice and Joe while we're trying to get Joe unmuted here, because I understand that you're both moving on to uh, more relaxing endeavors somewhere else. So we, we've loved having you both. You both have been huge assets to the community, and thank you for all the work that you've put in for us. Joe Kraus. Thank you, Randall. I think this is just an amazing thing that's happening here this evening. It is a perfect example of what a handful of visionary and dedicated people can do when you're committed to making your community the very best place it can be. And every time a group of our citizens comes together and does something as wonderful as this, <clears throat> it inspires the rest of us to think, what else is it that I can do to contribute to the welfare of this great community. So I happen to think Vermont is an exceptional place. I think Rutland is one of the most exceptional places in Vermont. And I think the efforts undertaken here and announced this evening are just another example of that. And I, I can't conclude without saying, <clears throat> I also wonder whether we'd be having this conversation tonight, but for Kim Peters and her vision to do what she has done at the rec center. Another example of one person coming up with a brilliant idea, working her butt off along with so many others, bringing along everyone she can to bring her vision to reality. So it's a perfect example of how one inspiring event brings about another and another and another and creates such confidence and hope for our future. So I'm proud of everyone involved in the project. And if there was anything that I could ever do to be of assistance, uh, I would be there for you. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. And yeah, another thank you to Kim. That that really, if the rec center wasn't there, we wouldn't be there. It's just that simple. That's why we thought of the spot. So anybody else? I'm not seeing hands on our screen. So if you're there and you want to talk, unmute yourself and um, make yourself known. <laughs> Alrighty, it looks like we might be winding down for the evening then. Um, thank you all. As I said, this is the first step of the public unveiling of this. Um, I will be going to my computer um, and, and turning on our website that has a form. Uh, the more people that fill the form out, the more people that tell us what we can do for the public of Rutland County, um, the better a job uh, we'll, we'll do in, in finishing this project off. Thank you all for your support. Thank you for your time and attention tonight. Um, this means so much to us. Thank you all and good night. Thank you. You can end the call.